On today's show, should Luka Doncic be first team all NBA? We'll tell you why or why not. Today it's like on Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic and this is Locked On Mavericks. NBA champion. He is I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. Subscribe or follow for free wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, become part of the Raccoon Squad, and to comment anything below let us know should Luka Doncic be first team all NBA I'm very interested in the no's the no answers on a locked on Mavericks YouTube Ooh. channel could be very interesting if you want to support the show text us and get text alerts from us on Mavs rumors and more throughout the offseason subscribe to our subtext 214-643-8637 you can text that number or click the link in the description below and you can text us we've been texting people all week and it's been great loving getting your questions and all that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, and contributor at Mavs.com. The awards author, the one more thinking, what you got for me, Isaac Harris? You listed off that number, made me think of the Mike Jones song. 2A1, 3 3 0 Um... <laughs> And then, like, you try to call the number, and it's disconnected, and, like, all the stuff. And... Yeah, you can only text it, by the way. You're not going to be able to call us. <laughs> yeah, don't Yeah, don't. Don't try to call it. Um, we won't answer. <laughs> but, yeah, great way to support the show. Our subtext, again, the link in the description below. And, uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about our awards picks. We got an official lockdown ballot. I spent probably too many hours putting together an awards yes. ballot for Lockdown NBA. We did it exactly like the NBA. And so we're going to go through who we picked. Uh, and we also have our picks from the beginning of the season. So who we had at the beginning. And we'll also go through at the end and talk about our playoff predictions because the playoffs will be starting over the weekend. And we want to get those in um, before we you know we talk about that. Hey, I want to plug something real quick right off the top. We have something else. We, yeah, we do. <laughs> before we hit the first award here. I want to welcome Howard Beck. To, Let's go. To locked on. What up, Beck? Uh, what, what up, Beck? Beck? Uh, just yeah, they shot that announcement out today. And uh, Howard Beck joining Locked On for the playoffs as our NBA insider and all that stuff. So, uh, do we have details on the what day of the week and show or no? I will be hosting a Locked On NBA episode yeah. with Howard Beck yeah. every Monday on Locked On NBA. It'll be it'll Let's drop go. it'll drop in the afternoon. So yes, you'll be able to hear me on Locked On NBA. I'm still I'll still do Locked On Thursday, Locked On NBA Thursdays with Pat. Uh, but I'll now do Mondays with Howard. And then also, Howard's going to come on Locked on Mavs on Thursday of Let's next week. Go. So so that should be great. He'll be talking all about the dismantling of the Mavericks. I'm he's curious. He's a friend to, of the pod. Yeah, second time he's been on. Yeah, he's so, a great, great guy. One of the best in the business covering NBA for so many years. So anyway, I just want to throw it out there. Yeah, it's a, gr- a great get. David Locke did a great job working on that. And uh, yeah, he's going to be joining us for the playoffs in the offseason. And uh, yeah, so I'll be on Locked on NBA uh, starting this Monday with him. So that should be great. Let's go. But let's, let's start talk about he- Lucas' chances. Let's start here. Should Luka Doncic be first team All NBA? Because Zach Lowe released his All NBA today. Zach Lowe is probably the number one thought leader in NBA media. Is there thought somebody leader. above him? Thought leader? Uh, I'm, it's, that's, what I, that's the word I would use thought leader. Because. All of a sudden, when he says something, I think about, like, oh, should I change my opinion on that? And I don't think there's many other people that I do that with. Ryan Rossillo makes me. For you. I don't think he's that for many other people. Rossillo puts in the hours, though. I mean, this dude, no family, by by himself, (laughs) just grinds NBA games. So I, I I put him up there near the top for me. Yeah, for, for you. But I think in, in general, I think Zach Lowe is, is oh, one okay. of the most respected. And so he put Luka Doncic on his second team today. And we did our votes for Lockdown NBA. And Luka Doncic got first team all NBA, 126 total votes. He tied with Donovan Mitchell, though, for points. Yeah. And the tiebreaker I did, which I think is the same in the NBA tiebreaker, is how many first team votes you got. Luka got 
out of our 38 total voters for Locked On NBA awards, we just did our Locked On NBA hosts. So whoever hosts Locked On Mavs, Locked On Heat, Locked On Wizards, all that. Luca got 18 first place votes, and Donovan Mitchell got 17 first place votes total out of this. And so now it, it comes into question. He was so close to missing it on Locked On on Locked On's ballot to missing first team. Uh, he didn't get first team on Zach Lowe's ballot. I'm very fascinated to see what he's going to, you know, show up on and the actual ballot, if he's going to get first team or not. But you and I both had him first team, and and I think he should be first team. Yeah, I do, th- I do too. I think it's so hard this year because, you know, it's basically a three-man race for two spots in the first team All-NBA. It's Luka, uh, SGA, and Donovan Mitchell. Um, and what it's going to come down to is, hey, do you prioritize some of the outrageous stats – on a team that wasn't very good for Luka Doncic, or are you going to prioritize a little bit less stats for Donovan Mitchell, but had much better teammates on a much better team with a, you know, the fourth best record in the East. Um, I think that's what I I think when you do the like Luka versus Shea, I think it's a little harder to give. It's a little harder to give Luka the nod over Shea just because you know he did beat him out for that last in you know, that play in spot, which is so it's so wild. To <laughs> Literally think about, head like, to head. Yeah, and, and, and it's like, all right, so you're going to give it to Luca over Shea because he averages you know three more assists per game, you know you know four more rebounds a game, but like their scoring is really similar, three point percentage is really similar, field goal percentage Shea's you know a little bit better. They played, you know, that's another thing about these three guys, you know. S, you know, SGA and Donovan Mitchell both play 68 games, Luca 66. So you can't do any like game thing. Um, so that's the thing. It's like, I think SGA, uh, yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, I give Luca the nod because I, I admit we're biased. We watch this team every single minute of this season and we've seen the, the supporting cast that Luca had to deal with. And he still finished the season 32 points, eight assists, eight rebounds. 50% from the field. Um, I just, I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't, I can't not vote first team for a guy that's 32, eight and eight. So there you go. I just think if you look at the difference between Luca and, and Donovan Mitchell's stats, their teammates, the players around them and like their impact on their team. And like the difference between Luca and when he was on and off the court and when Donovan Mitchell was on and off the court, you, then you, you get to, okay, like Luca is just is so much better and just on another tier level than Donovan Mitchell. And if I'm going to put SGA first team guaranteed, right? If that's what I'm going to do, then you then you can't like can you can you just demote Luca just because he missed the play in when SGA's team was not that much better than, than him, right? And just and was the tenth seed in the West. I think you if you if you're parsing between those two things, you can't just then like take Luca and move him down. Now, one of Zach Lowe's points was that. You know, Luca's lack of defense this year, Luca's complaining and whining to the refs, like that negative became such a negative for him that it 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 tore him down a peg. And I I understand that. Like I understand if mm-hmm. if that's what you're gonna take and, and take Luca down a peg because he did affect his team not not winning, you know, as much as they, they should have this year. And some people might but hear that and say even if it okay, wasn't that's... even if it wasn't just completely his fault, right? Like let's be clear yeah. about that. Well, I think some people might hear that and be like, man, that's such a small reason for it. But like you are kind of splitting hairs when it comes to these three guys, and one of them has to be second team. I mean, the debate over Jokic and Embiid, like it's a mess. One of those guys is going to have to be second team all NBA. Yeah. So, and that that's just how it is. And they're both having historic seasons. So, uh, for me, I think I, I would go the SGA, you know, Luca route for first and second team, put Mitchell there. I mean, Mitchell also has a, a teammate averaging over 20 points in the game and Garland at 21 points. He has an you know an Evan Mobley that is is going to finish second or third in defensive player of the year yeah. probably, um, heck maybe even first I don't know but I, it's just a much much better team but it's it's also tough for me too because I also do value winning a lot when it comes to awards and this stuff and for me to it kind of hurts my soul a little bit of saying hey I'm going to give it to I'm going to give first team All NBA to two guards who finished tenth and eleventh in their <laughs> conference. Uh, compared to a guy in fourth, but that's how I'd go. Yeah, Cleveland. Cleveland was fourth in the in the East. Won fifty one games. The Mavs and 
Pelicans won 38 and 42 games. So that, there's a huge difference between between them, though. If you're gonna if you're going to prioritize winning, and but I don't think you I don't think you can take Luka down for them sitting him the last couple of games either. Oh heck no! no right? Like if you're, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna start using that example, then that that just doesn't work. But but it's so close though. I'm not going to be the mad person online if Luca finishes second team. No, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll be either. a little bombed. I'm like, dang it, I wish he could have finished first. But for all the reasons you listed, and for them missing the play in, and like all that, if they did give it to Mitchell and Shea, I kind of get it, and it 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 sucks, but it's like, I I kind of get it. I'm not going to be mad. Coming up, let's talk about the rest of our awards. Where do we? Did we vote Luca MVP? Did we give any votes for Luca MVP? Who do we vote for Defensive Player of the Year? All that kind of stuff. We'll fly through those coming up but before we do let me tell you about nissan's most electric player of the week brought to you by the all-new all-electric 2023 nissan aria the player of the week i'm going outside the mavericks i'm sorry they're not playing right now so the player of the week is clear to me electric fierce elegant powerful stunningly powerful i would say it's dr derozan her her defense again her defense against the Raptors in the Bulls play and win when she was screaming when they were at the free throw line and the Raptors shot 50% from the free throw line. I did locked in NBA that night and Pat and I were going nuts about how great she was that she actually really did affect that game. It was incredible. It was a great moment in NBA history, I think, uh, just because it was DeRozan's daughter. It was a quiet gym when they shot, shot free throws because they were in Toronto. Like, if this was, an away, this was a home game, it would be completely different for the Raptors and all that kind of stuff. Like, it just had to come be absolutely perfect, just like the 2023 Nissan Aria packs. Pin you to your seat power, premium intelligence, all-in-one EV. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. All right, Isaac Harris, thanks everybody for being part of this show. If you listen every day, you're part of the Raccoon Squad. You can also join our subtext, get text alerts from us, text us, ask us questions. Click the link in the description below. All right, let's talk about the rest of our awards. Let's just start going through uh, the ballot here. Let's start, we, 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 we're doing all NBA, so let's go ahead and, and finish all NBA here because we've been we've been talking about it. I had Luca okay. and, and SGA first team. Which yeah. is, is how our locked on ballot ended up being. And I think you had the same thing. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell and Steph Curry were my t- second team all NBA guards. And that's what locked ons ended up being as well. Yep. And then Damian Lillard and De'Aaron Fox ended up being my third team. And that's what locked on ended up. Being Mine well. too. The hardest part about this was the guards because of the games played. Like Lillard played yeah. 58 games. I think Curry played what, like 56 or something like that games. Like they just didn't play a lot, but then you start looking at all the guards in front of you and you're like, Oh, well then my other options are like John ja Morant or Devin Booker who also played like 60, 54 games. Do- John ja Morant yeah. had like the suspension in the middle of the year. Uh, J- you know, Jalen Brunson was, was in consideration. He got some votes. He got two first team all NBA votes on our lockdown poll, by the way. First team? Two first team. He got one second. Don't we, got, have, don't we have two Knicks hosts? Oh, I gotta I gotta check to see who did it, but, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and then James Harden got, you know, only got six total points. So one second play, one second team and three third team. So like that's those are the players that you're you're parsing through right now. And so the games played ended up just being not as much of a factor for me this year. If it's next season when 65 games is the threshold, it's going to be fascinating to see if it looks the exact same because half of yeah. these guys that we voted for wouldn't even qualify. Yeah. No, yeah, it's going to be that 65 game mark is I low key love it. I, I do too. I think I think that's great. And I think it's going to motivate some guys just for like every once in a while. There's still going to be load management. There's still going to be, yeah. you know, some things here and there because it really does help guys stay like in their career es- longer. But especially because there's a lot of incentives when it comes to all NBA yeah. with contracts and how high some extensions can go that. Yeah, I thought it was a good move uh, for all NBA forwards. I had Giannis and Tatum. I think you have the same thing. Yep. Uh, that's what Locked On had as well. I had Joel Embiid first team center as well. We can just go through yep. the front courts. Second team, um, I had Jalen Brown, and I ended up going Pascal Siakam. Wow. I know. That was my that was my wild card pick because I think he's had a great season, an underrated season, and I started going through games played with like Kevin Durant, who only played like 40-something, and then LeBron had played like 53. And so I ended up putting LeBron and Kevin Durant third team. And I was like, I'll just – 
I can't put one of them third team and one of them second team. So I just put them. I just put Siakam second. Yeah, I actually did Durant and Markinen as mm. my second team. But for lockdown, it ended up being Kevin Durant and Jalen Brown for second team, and then third team was Jimmy Butler and Giannis. Third team, third te- or G- Jimmy Butler and LeBron. Sorry, oh, I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's where we went there. Uh, centers are going to be easy. Like this is the way that it came out is the, oh, is, yeah. the is the way that it's going to happen. Joel Embiid first team, Jokic second team, Sabonis third team. Like that's it. Are you are you worried a little bit about AD taking some stuff away from Sabonis? No. All right, good. I'm not because I think he's also going to be on four. I think he's also going to be available as a forward too, which is weird. Mm. So that's all NBA. I think- I'll say Julius Randle is going to be hard one for me because it's like I debated with him and Jalen Brown. In that on the third team, by the way. Yeah, our toughest ones were um John Morant got 29 points and De'Aaron Fox got 39 points in this, so that they were pretty close. Um LeBron James got 34 points and Julius Randle got 26 points and marketing got mm. 24 points. So they, they were pretty close in our locked on poll. Um, marketing not being an all NBA guy this year is kind of ludicrous for me, to be honest. Well, it's just because the game's played for some of these guys. Like he's just he's not as good as LeBron and Kevin Durant. I, I got to that point where I was like, Am I really going to pick Julius Randle over Kevin Durant? Like how good Kevin Durant was this year on multiple teams. Like, am I really just gonna go through and say, Okay, Randle played thirty three more games than or thirty more games than Kevin Durant? I think I would rather have Kevin Durant for the forty games than Julius Randle for the seventy. Yeah, but I don't know. That's just a dangerous slippery slope for me though. Of those like You always do this. <laughs> I know, but if like you just start going into like, yeah, it's like, would I rather have Steph Curry or Donovan Mitchell? Steph, or like Steph or Shea? Steph. It's like, would I rather have Devin Booker over De'Aaron Fox? Yeah, I would. And it's like, if you start going into that route, then it, it's tough. That I think games played like 20, 30 game difference has to matter, you know? And then what's the cutoff if KD plays? 20 games is like KD was great in those 20 games though. So, but then, then my cutoff ended up being, okay, well, if I'm cutting off Kevin Durant, I'm probably cutting off LeBron. And then I'm also probably close to cutting off Curry Curry and, you know, like Booker and a bunch of these other guys too. So that's what ended up being for all NBA, but the all NBA is the one that I care about the most. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it means the most let's do some award stuff. MVP. Yeah. MVP. I, I had Embiid. This this is my ballot. I had Embiid, Giannis, Jokic, which I think you had that same order. I did, but I don't know why because I've been <laughs> kind of on the Giannis thing. I think I misplaced it because Giannis should have been my vote. Gian- Giannis is my vote. I don't I don't understand like what what's the argument for Embiid over Giannis? The M- the argument for Embiid over Giannis is uh probably like you look at like Giannis has the the best record he's on the best team in the east yeah and then it's like Giannis is averaging more rebounds almost two rebounds a game more he's two points less he's shooting a a little bit better field goal percentage i mean he's played three games less than it i guess they're just their stat lines are pretty similar to me and i'm like he's on the best team in the conference so it's like why is Embiid? clearly the vote for people over Giannis. Anyway. Sometimes I feel like with MVP, it's just your year. Is that I would dumb? even say Giannis is a better defender than more versatile defender than Embiid. Is I it, just, yeah. is, does Giannis have a better supporting cast than Embiid? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Giannis kinda, would be my vote though. Yeah. It, it's it's gonna come down to it. I think I think it's definitely gonna be Embiid. And, I think Embiid wins it, yeah. Uh Embiid finished with 24 first place votes with in locked on 10 first place votes for, for Jokic and five, six. If, if Isaac would have done his ballot correctly, <laughs> so he would have got six first place votes then yep. <laughs> uh, for, for MVP. So that's who we had there. Let us know in the comments who you had for MVP. Uh, the beginning of the season, we both picked Luca before the season started. We picked mm. Luca for, for MVP. That, that uh, pick looked good early on. You ended up giving Luca a fifth place vote. And I, I didn't give Luca a fifth place vote. Why'd you end up there? I mean, for a lot of reasons why putting first team all NBA, um, you know, my fourth place vote, I, I went to, I gave it to Donovan Mitchell, actually. Um, I probably would, I don't know. I don't know if I just clicked the wrong things on here or what. 
because I would have given that to Tatum over Mitchell. Um, but yeah, I mean, I yeah, for a lot of the same reasons, because it's it's basically for me, it'd be Luca versus SGA and Donovan Mitchell for that fifth spot MVP. And for a lot of the same reasons I mentioned for all NBA. Coming up, let's keep going through some awards and then we'll give our playoff predictions later. Coming up, we'll talk about that. But before we do, let me tell you about Built Bar. It's a protein bar. Tastes like a candy bar. They're delicious. And I got the mint brownie puff. They're good. It's a good bar. Oh, mint brownie puff? Mint brownie puff. Yep. That sounds pretty good. That's a great bar. You can go check it out. You can get them at Sam's Club, Walmart. They have cookie dough strip, and they have coconut brownie strip. I don't know what the strip Ooh. ones are yet, but I, I, I'm probably going to – this is probably the, like, next, the next one I have to check out. You like to strip. Uh, yeah, stripping any kind of, like, you know, vinyl or, like, uh, you know, stripping, like <laughs> – if I'm screwing in something, I like to, you know, don't, strip, don't strip the bolt, strip the bolt. Yeah. Uh, so go check them out. Built bar, healthy taste. Amazing. The macros are incredible. This new, um, coconut brownie strip bar, 160 calories, 15 grams of protein. And you don't have to worry about the sugar either because the sugar is eight grams of sugar. That's it. In a bar that's absolutely delicious. You can get them at Walmart, Sam's club. Also get them at built.com. All right, Isaac Harris, let's keep going on with our awards picks. Talk about MVP, Defensive Player of the Year. This is one where I, 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 I bucked the trend from everybody else. I went with Draymond, Defensive Player of the yeah, Year. Yeah, me too. I went Brooke Lopez second, and I went Jaron Jackson Jr. third. I went, I went with Draymond because his team was better. His team had 111 defensive rating when he's on the court, 120 when he was off the court. Like... They were so different when he played, and I just saw him do way more like incredible defensive things. Also, I really got sucked into the minutes thing for Jaron Jackson. Uh, mm-hmm. He played 62 games. He wouldn't even be qualified for the award next year. He played 613 less minutes total than Brooke Lopez, 450, 485 less minutes than Draymond Green. So, like, Jaron Jackson Jr. averaged 28 minutes a game. If you and some of that is because of foul trouble. Some of that's because of just rotation. But some of that, a lot of that's because of foul trouble. And I, you can't be the defensive player of the year to me if you're dealing with with that. So I voted him third. Still, he was still incredible this season. But I went with Draymond because I just think he impacts his his specific team more than those other those than those other players like individually. You need to get you need to get stats from the Memphis statistician before you make that <laughs> judgment on Jaren. No, Sorry, I want Draymond too, but. But I put Draymond, Giannis, and Jaron Jackson. Mm. The Giannis Brook Lopez is so weird to me. Like, because it's like, okay, which one is more valuable to their team? I, I think I went with Brooke Lopez this year. Yeah. But yeah, like you have multi you have two defensive player of the year candidates on here. The Evan Mobley love late from a lot of people surprised me. And it, it made me what's that meme was like, sorry, I wasn't I wasn't familiar with your game. Like I watched Evan Mobley in person this year and watched, you know, a couple of their games. And I really, I guess I just didn't pay attention enough to him, to be honest. He's going to, he's going to finish like third on this ballot and ahead of like Draymond and some of these guys. And some people are going to be really confused by it, but yes, I I completely, but they're the number one defensive team in the NBA. So it makes sense that they would get some votes. They would get some votes for somebody. And he, he is like a super versatile defender that, but he defends next to Jared, to Jared Allen. Like yeah. Draymond defends next to Steph <laughs> and Clay, like Clay after multiple injuries and stuff. So I, I think Draymond does more in his spot. Uh, most of, uh, in uh, our locked on poll, we end up going with Jaron Jackson was number one, uh, Brooke Lopez number two, pretty pretty clearly number two. He had 101 points, and then Evan Mobley finished third with 39 points. Like the difference between doing second and third was huge. Bam yeah. finished fourth with 28 points draymond with three first place votes so two of those are you and me and probably the other one is probably the other one is cyrus (laughs) so probably um but yeah he finished finished fifth draymond's old team and new team (laughs) we hope so we hope so most improved this one's easy lowry sga brunson that's the way it's gonna finish right it shouldn't be that way man why it should be SGA. SGA should win this dang award. This is the you this go, is, I've been stuck on this island all freaking season. You go from 24 points a game to 31 points a game, and you go you jump from the spot he was last year to first team all the NBA. 
that is an incredible jump. And, and I love Markinen's jump this year, but like he jumped from like a borderline star to like a, a like a borderline, a, legit... sta- a borderline star, Lowry Markinen. No SGA. Oh, SGA. Okay. You went back. Yeah. 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 Sorry. And to like the level SGA is at now, like, man, SGA has got to win it for me, especially because John Morant, like it, he just fits that mold of the, the player who jumps into like the superstar level. Well, this was your thing about Luca a couple of years ago. It's that Luca from yeah. his for what was it his rookie year to his second year or his, yeah that he sh- he should have been most that. improved. But with th- with this with this vote, it's all about what do you value more: a player going from like a fringe rotation player to an All Star, or a fringe All Star to a to an All NBA. Like which yeah. one do you value more, right? Which which one do you think it was actual improvement? I think Larry Market improved the most mm-hmm. because. We're just seeing him do things he didn't do before. <laughs> was, who's the third person on your list? Jalen Brunson. I actually wrote in a name to our ballot. I know who you wrote in, and it, su- it surprised the mess out of me, to be honest, because you're the only one that wrote this. Not even the Cam brothers wrote this. I wrote in Austin Reeves as the third as my third vote. Floored me. Floored me. I was... It- it's a nice, penetrating thrust. <laughs> I mean... The dude's about to get paid this offseason, and he was nothing last year, right? Like, <laughs> he was okay. Okay, well, he finished with one third place mi- minimum co- <laughs> minimum contract to, you know, to making some of these numbers that I'm hearing right now is pretty insane. It's the Laker effect; they have to overpay guys. Stars, too. baby. Uh, and he's got a shooting now, right? Rookie of the year is not even worth talking about. Uh, it is if you're if you're a, a jazz <laughs> reporter. You see that story today? Wait, what? Andy Larson has has a Walker Kessler as his as his rookie of the year, oh. and it's gonna ruin it's gonna ruin Paolo's uh, unanimous vote. But we didn't have unanimous on locked wow. on either. We had Paolo got thirty four of the thirty nine votes. Jalen Williams got three first place out of the thirty nine. Keegan Murray got one. Jaden Ivey got one. I was gonna say this is like J- picking Jaden like Ivey Keegan got Murray. Jaden Ivey got one first place vote. Zero second and zero third by anybody from Locked On. So I don't know who was somebody messed up on the form. I think with the J. What is, vote. What is Koo and Matt George doing? Like why? Are, I don't think it was Koo that voted Jade Jade Ivy to be honest. Jade Ivy first. Oh, like yeah, it's Palo Ben Carroll. That's it. I mean, we don't even have yeah. to spend a lot of time on it. Six Stop. man, six man. Oh, by the way, uh, before the season for Defensive Player of the Year, I had Gobert. Dumb. You had Draymond, which you end up picking. So just confirmation he's, bias. he's not gonna win it but um rookie of the year we both had palo air high five yeah. <laughs> good job uh most improved we both had tyrese maxi Ooh, i feel like he did feel like he didn't get enough like no. run to be able to do that because of and beads he didn't make that lead six man of the year let's do that one next uh i think this one's easy this one was pretty easy the first two Qu- emmanuel quickly and malcolm brogdon yeah i had brogdon first quickly second yeah they, they came really close Quickly had 17 first place votes. Brogdon had 16 first place votes. Really close together. It just it came down to second place, really. Uh, and then my third one was Bobby Portis. He ended up being third in our Ooh. on our lockdown thing too. I went with Malik Monk, but I mean, you're kind of no. Just... I, actually, you're right. I did go with Malik. I went. I ended up going with Malik Monk at the end. Yeah, he I mean, was right next to him. You really are. I mean, I, you know, Christian Will was a close fourth. He got zero votes. Um, I put him on the ballot even. He didn't get any Yeah, votes. you did. I noticed that. Well, um, he was like third in bench player scoring, so I was like, well, I'll throw him on. Yeah. But, yeah, I ended up going with, with Malik Monk third on that one. I feel like he just had bigger moments this season than yeah, some, he of these did. Other, some of these other guys. Coach of the year, unanimous. This, this one should be. Uh, it was not unanimous for Locked On, but it, it should be Mike Brown, and it is going to be Mike Brown. We already heard from Woj today that it, Coach of the Year is going to be Mike Brown of the Kings. Um I then put Missoula third. I had Dagnalt of the uh, the Thunder second. Yeah, I had Dagnalt second, and then I had a uh, Jacques Vaughn third mm. for me. What just, Jacques Vaughn it, underrated this year? <laughs> giving him a vote just for the just for the headache that he dealt with. Just everything. I mean, and they stayed in the play. Like, yeah, I know Kuzma <laughs> doesn't think much about them staying as a playoff team, but. <laughs> uh, six man of the year, beginning of the season, you had Jordan Poole. Okay. I had Malcolm Brogdon and I should have, I should have just voted for him just, just to keep my prediction, but I ended up going with quickly over him. That's Um, pretty good. 
Coach of the year, we both had Ty Lue. That ended up not working out. Woof. Well, that was so random of a pick for us. Well, he was, they were supposed. this was supposed to be their year. Like, they're the deepest team. They're healthy. Like, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you want to do all rookie <laughs> and, and, and all defense and all that? Oh, goodness. Um, no. <laughs> you can go look at our votes. On You can go look and see where Locked On voted on the thread at Locked On Network on Twitter if you want to go see all those. Um, let's talk about the let's, – let's do some playoff predictions here. Yeah. Let's start with the West. Denver versus OKC or Memphis or uh, Minnesota. I'm picking Denver in four either way. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah like I'm say. pick. I'm, I think it's pretty easy. I, I'm loving the play in and how the, like these teams are playing each other and all that, like the tightness of these games. But mm, the other day, so Mike, good. Mike Breen was like, either of these teams could go and take on Denver and maybe beat them. I was like, Oh, come on. Are we sure? Like, are we sure Mike? No, <laughs> he'd been hanging out with Mark Jackson too long. Uh, also in that play in game the other day, <laughs> there, uh, Jeff Van, uh, Jeff Van Gundy was like, congratulations to all of you guys on your sports Emmys to Mark Jackson, to Mike Breen. I was like, Mark Jackson won a sports Emmy. It's like, what are we doing for what? It was for a documentary. He, he did. It's like, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Um, Phoenix versus the Clippers. This one is, is interesting. No Paul George probably for this one. There's talks that he may come, come if like by the end of this series, if it ends up being a little bit longer, but I'm picking Phoenix in six. Yeah. I took Phoenix in the series. It would be kind of funny if the Clippers beat them. Did you not do games? No, I didn't. No. Okay. I uh, did the ESPN uh ESPN NBA playoff challenge. Mm. It's kind of fun. Sacramento versus Golden State Warriors. This one is a fascinating series to me because the home court, like oh, like the the Sacramento Kings home games, they could just win all their home games and just move on in seven. Like that would be that would be so this Warriors season. Uh, but I'd I'd Warriors in six because I think they have to they have to win they have to win at least one on the road, but they're gonna win all three at home. I'm drinking the Kings Kool-Aid. Wow. I'm taking the Kings. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I gotta get my locked in NBA board out. Uh yeah, I'm I'm taking I'm taking the wow. Kings. They've 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 sold me on their yeah, momentum. This is spite from last season, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You and I went to game one and two of the Western Conference Finals, and we were, we had to walk out as the Mavericks had lost. And we heard we had to hear Warriors. We had to hear that over and Rush. over again walking to our hotel. Yeah. It was brutal. Memphis versus the Lakers. This is this is a tough one because Memphis doesn't have Steven Adams. They don't have um Brandon, Brandon Clark. Clark. Those are those two guys are huge in this series. And so, as I did the the NBA preview for Lockdown NBA with uh, with uh, Joe Mullinex, he was like, "Yeah, you know they they haven't been as good like rebounding. They haven't been as good. I'm like, they're all their superpowers are like, <laughs> like dwindling because this is the thing that this team was really good at, and they don't have that against this Lakers team. I picked Lakers in seven. I picked the Lakers too. Wow, um, I'll be rooting for the Grizzlies. Shocker, uh, but." This is the series that the the Grizzlies talk so much smack. <laughs> then you need to take care of business as a number two seed. Uh, yeah, they do. So, uh, let's do the um, let's do the clip uh, the uh, Knicks versus the Cavs. This one is an interesting Randall. one because Julius Randle is not. Well, we're moving to the we're moving to the, the East. I'm picking Cleveland in six because Randall isn't cleared so far for game one. It could, could be Cleveland in five, I think pretty easily, but yeah, yeah. yeah. This one's tough. If Randall's Randall's not even clear for like contact yet before game one. Yeah. I'm going to take Cleveland in this one. I, was, I didn't think too long and hard about it. Um, The bucks versus whoever I'm picking the bucks in four. <laughs> doesn't matter who they play. Doesn't matter. Bucks is playing. Yeah. Uh, Celtics Hawks. Celtics, yeah. I'm going. I, I think for for the, for the East in this, it's like for me, it's just all chalk at the. At I the, think Bucks, yeah. Bucks, Celtics, and Sixers all in four. Celtics, Hawks, Nets, Sixers, Bucks, whoever. Interesting. Okay. Like, who has Buc- a better chance at winning two games, the Nets or Hawks? Uh. <sighs> I think the Nets because I think that I think the Sixers could come out flat in a couple games and like like they did at the beginning of the season. Remember the beginning of the season they're like yeah. ten and ten and you're like what is going on? This this team was supposed to be really good this year. 
and they got Dinwiddie. I think yeah. So that's the that's all first round. So <laughs> so four 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 for Bucks, Sixers, Celtics, and then I'll pick the Cavs pretty easily in their series with Randall out. The East is not so good, huh? Well, the second round of the East is gonna be second incredible. round. Second round is gonna be I mean, great. Yeah, Bucks and Cavs. You know, Sixers, Celtics, second round is gonna be awesome. Let us know in the comment section below who are your picks. Let us know if you think Lucas should be first team All NBA Wait, again. You, you got to tell me who you got in the finals, though. We oh, we're good. You want to go on the whole thing? I'm mean, we gonna do the whole thing, but at least the at least the finals before this playoffs start. Give me Nuggets, Bucks. Then I'll go with the ones. I'll go chalk with the ones. I did Bucks, Suns, and uh, Bucks beating them. Wow, the rematch, the Bucks Suns yeah. rematch. Um, I was really wanting to pick something like fun, like man, it would be so awesome to have like Kings. I don't know, Kings Cavs. I, the, the Kings path is the Warriors, Lakers, or Grizzlies, and then Nuggets or Suns. That's that's tough. That is a tough path. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think yeah, I think a lot of that stuff, a lot of these teams in the West, yeah. Anyway. They're just all so bunched together and have been so bunched together this season that it's hard to find separators from them. Like the Warriors are clear favorites betting wise and people picking them over the Kings in this series. And they're the sixth seed and <laughs> the Kings are the third seed. It's weird. I mean, the sun, I mean, the Suns would have to beat the Clippers nuggets and then like a Warriors or Lakers, maybe like that. I mean, pretty. it's a t- tough path for them too. Yeah. It's pretty tough. The bucks though, the bucks are the easiest. They're going to play either the bulls or the heat. The Cavs probably, and then, then they'll have to play one of those tough teams like that. The cap, like the Cavs, could give them a series though. Like, oh it, yeah, that, it, that'd that, be, it would be hard, but it wouldn't. It's not going to be as hard as some of these other ones. No, it could be a, oh the you know some of these Cavs young guys are a little bit, you know they kind of punched above their weight class a little bit. Mobley, Garland, Jared Allen, like against that length against Giannis could be a lot of fun. They have some experience with Mitchell. Like that would it, it'd be a lot of fun. And the Bucks have struggled to score in the half court all season. And the Cavs are the number one defense in the NBA. That's yeah, that's that tough. series would be fascinating. Let us know in the comment section below again what you think about that. And uh yeah, go ahead and subscribe to our subtext too. Get get some text from us. Text us. Let us know what you're thinking. Let's do it. We'll be back next week. And I'm sure we're gonna talk about some. NBA draft stuff. Oh, we're we're gonna we'll dive in. We'll start diving into the NBA draft. People are already texting us on subtext. Who do you think about? Th- what do you think about this draft yep. pick? All right, I'll, I'll dive some into tra- the draft. Some stuff. Trade opportunities with that tenth pick. We'll bring in. We'll bring in Richard Stamen to do the. Uh, we'll bring in Howard Mav- Beck Mavs draft to do the draft stuff. So, guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Peace out. Boom.